One of the things that irritate people in parishes, or at least they say it irritates them, is when the parish priest is always asking for more money. The church is old, the, the roof needs repairs, the parking lot needs new, uh, new pavement or new paving because of the snow and the severe winter that we have had. The carpets need redoing, the benches, the pews are falling apart, the hymn books the pages are coming out. In the parish that I work, it's all of the above. It's more or less like our bodies, doesn't it? As we grow older, first the knees give trouble, then the legs begin to swell, the hair, you begin to lose your hair. Well, I've been losing that for some time now. And gradually, to keep these old things going, you need a lot of money, but people resent that. And so when government institutions ask for money for bailout, people are very reluctant to do that. And they get very irritated when CEOs walk away with millions of dollars. Or if you're being paid $2,500, $2,700 a day, and you still bill the government for a cup of coffee or donuts, those things get very irritating. It's not the quantity in itself, but when things are tight, you don't want to give more money. Well, St. Paul is precisely doing that. It goes back to the time of the apostles. But St. Paul is not asking for money to rebuild a church or, or to even build a church. He says the people in Jerusalem are having a very hard time and we need to collect money to bail them out, to help them out. Their times are very severe. And we can understand that when Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans and uh, Louisiana, we realized people from Canada went down there. When I asked people, why are you going? You don't even know the people. They said, when somebody is suffering, we go. I said, where are you going to get the money? It says, from our pockets. And I said, why are you doing this? Said, because they are human beings and they need help. When the tsunami hit Thailand and Sri Lanka, people put money for people they had never seen and probably they would never meet. Hearts go out to people that are in need. But here in the letter to the Corinthians, they were very reluctant. They said, why are we, a Gentile community, trying to help those Christians who are from a Jewish community in Jerusalem? And Paul gives them two reasons, or perhaps even a third reason. The first he said was, you realize that you are Christians, you received teachers, you received prophets. From where? From the same Jewish community, the Jewish Christians in Jerusalem. They saw their needs and they handed you on a treasure, the treasure of faith. And now you can repay that, not in faith, but when they are in material needs and straits, you can gather. And besides, you are a rich community. The second reason he gave them was, he says, I put to you as a model the church in Macedonia, just the country to the north of them, a very poor country, a very poor church community, and yet they gathered money to help the, the Christians in Jerusalem. They did not give from all the excess that they had, they gave from their very substance. They gave until it hurt. And he says, if they can do it, how much more can you, the Corinthian church, that has wealth in plenty? And he says the third reason, though he does not mention it as a third reason, he says, remember, you have received love. Don't you think that you should return love? You have received so many pieces of goodness. Don't you think you should share that goodness with others? And Jesus picks up that same theme in the gospel today. Uh, the first line says, Jesus says, you have heard, love your fr friends and hate your enemies. Actually, there's something lost in the translation here, because nowhere in the Hebrew scriptures do they tell you to hate anybody. Hate here is used in the terms of excluding. It's very easy to, for you and me to understand. Love our family, our friends. I love my parents, I love my brothers and their families. I love the friends that are constantly helping me out. I even love business partners that are there to do business with me. And therefore I exclude those who are not helpful for those who are there perhaps to take my inheritance, perhaps to take my very um, life, livelihood, and so 
I don't hate them, but I exclude them. And that is where Jesus comes in and says, no, if you are going to be a follower of mine, you have to love even those that can harm you. And now that is pretty difficult. Why would anybody in his senses or in her senses want to love and to reach out to people that are going to harm them? Why am I going to reach out and help people that have hurt me and perhaps might hurt me in the future? Why am I going to give unto people who are ready to take whatever a little that I have. It's something that comes from the very nature of trying to preserve ourselves. And therefore, it is very reasonable to love those that love me, to love those that protect me, to love those who support me as a priest, as a married person, as a single person within our church community, and to keep the others aside. We won't hate them, but we will exclude them. And Jesus says, I'm sorry, but if you want to be a follower of mine, if you want to walk in the ways that I call you, if you want to preach the kingdom of God, then you have to start by loving those that other people don't love and even loving those who seek to harm you. Now that is pretty tough indeed. But we realize that as the people, as I said, when they, when they went down to help people in, after Hurricane Katrina, we have to reach out because they are human beings. They are loved by God. They are made in God's image and likeness, and therefore we reach out to them. We cannot exclude them because, as Jesus says in the Gospel, God loves them. God loves them whether they are saints or sinners. God lets his rain fall on the righteous and on the unrighteous. God lets the sun fall in the same way. And therefore we are encouraged if we are one to walk in the paths of the Lord to reach out to those who require, who need our love even though they might harm us. Walk in the way of the Lord means to love everybody. To be Catholic means to be universal. And so we reach out to those in need, and we reach out to those who even seek to harm us. God bless you all. Would you join me now as we pray together? <clears throat> For strength and unity within our church, and in our individual parish communities, we pray to the Lord. For world leaders who work together for international peace and reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and those who have asked us to pray for them, for those suffering from amyot amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, from Parkinson's, from cancer, from asthma and allergies, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died during the night, for the souls in purgatory, for peace in our hearts and for the troubled spots in the world, we pray to the Lord for an increase of vocation to priestly and religious life, for those whose vocation is to live as single Catholics within our church, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving and gracious God, your Son Jesus asked us to be perfect as you, our Heavenly Father, are, per is per are perfect. We ask you to bless us and to listen to our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.